U Boat Leader New Solitaire Game by TVG. You, the player, will lead a pack of stealthy, sneaky U boats on a hunt for allied ships in World War II. Interesting premise, let's see what the game does with it. To start the campaign, you will choose one of the four provided campaign sheets that come with the game and that have different maps and will provide you with different challenges. Next, you choose the length of the campaign that you want to play. You can play a short, medium or long campaign. What makes a difference is the number of patrols that your U-boats will perform. In a short campaign, one patrol, two patrols, four patrols per U-boat. A patrol is the number of times that a U-boat can go out at sea, hunt for enemies and return to port. For example, in a medium campaign, in a medium campaign the second time that one of your U-boats returns to port, that U-boat has finished performing for that campaign and it is removed from the game. And you keep playing until all your U-boats have completed their patrols and or have been sunk and at that point you can retrieve points and you determine the outcome of the campaign. The process of selecting U-boats will sound very familiar to players of the Air Leader series. In each campaign you will receive a number of special option points that will depend on the length of the campaign. Then you will spend those points to purchase your U-boats and the cost of each is printed there. And you can spend all of those points to purchase U-boats or you can save some to buy special weapons and or special options. The different models of U-boat that you can try and combine and they have different stats and abilities. Each U-boat has several important pieces of information printed on its card. A U-boat can be okay or shaken depending on the level of stress. Above that, a U-boat is unfit. A U-boat will have a certain level of initiative. A U-boat can be cautious or aggressive. Then each U-boat will have a gun attack modifier, a torpedo attack modifier, and an evasion number. Also, each U-boat can carry a certain number of torpedoes that can be in the ready section or it can be stored away. The ready ones can be used during battles. The stored away torpedoes are not available for battle, but they can be moved to the ready section between battles. Your U-boats start in the ports indicated on the map. At the beginning of a turn, you move your U-boats. U-boats move one at a time. First you move one and then once that one has completed its movement, you can move the other ones. You can move a U-boat by as many spaces as you want. The problem is that each time that you enter a new space, you have to draw the number of event cards indicated under the moving category. And if you're actually spending a turn in the same area where you started uh, the turn, you have to draw the number of cards equal to the patrolling value which, for example, in this case is the same, but in many cases is higher than the moving value because spending too much time in the same area in certain areas can make you more conspicuous and more exposed to danger. Because the event cards that you draw sometimes will give you good stuff, but not very often, sometimes it will be neutral, but in many cases the event cards will put in danger, will uh, create effects that are damaging to you that will wear out your submarines. That means that the more time you spend at sea, the more dangerous things become in an ideal world. You want to go out, hit the enemy hard and go back to port, but in the real world this may not be as easy. If you spend special option points to purchase special missions, then you can move the U-boat that you assigned the special mission to into the special mission box. You draw the extra number of cards indicated there and then you resolve the procedure. That will change depending on the type of special mission that you purchased. You purchase special missions by spending special option points. They also consume ammo, but if they are successful, they give you the opportunity to earn extra victory points. After the special mission phase has been resolved, you move the uh, U-boat that completed the mission to the searched box. 
At the point, one at a time, the U-boats that did not receive special missions can try to establish contact with the enemy. You roll 1d10, you modify the result based on several factors, and the modified result will tell you the number of contacts that you establish. Suppose that I roll for that guy there, I roll a 10, then that guy will receive two contacts, and he will have to resolve those contacts before I move to the next U-boat. For each of your contacts, you can draw a convoy card and try to attack one of the convoys. The convoy that you have encountered will be described on the card and you will have a diagram that will tell you how to set up the enemy convoy. Actually, at the beginning of an encounter, you will use generic markers, not the individual ships. And then you will reveal the actual ships as you approach the convoy by drawing cards that will tell you the identity of the ships that you have encountered. But here, for simplicity, I have already placed the actual ships on the tactical display. Then you will place your U-boat on the board. U-boats can be underwater with a speed of 1 or they can be surface with a speed of 2. Unless differently specified, usually you enter the tactical display from this area here. Uh, suppose I decide to uh, place my U-boat there. At this point, you can try to form a wolf pack, that is, to call to your help other U-boats that are in the same area and that have not been the active U-boat yet. But you have to really die. You may or may not be able to form a wolf pack, so you do not know in advance how many U-boats you will have present to the battle. Big difference from games in the earlier series when you know in advance how many aircrafts you can count on. First you had the movement phase and first the U-boat or U-boats move and they move by their speed value, in this case it will be 1. Then you have the lag movement phase. You will choose one of the merchant ships that have the highest speed value, in this case they all have 2, and you use that ship as the reference ship. The ships that have the same speed or higher do not move, same for the U-boats. But ships and U-boats that have lower speed will move towards the bottom of the tactical display by a number of spaces equal to the difference between their speed and the speed of the reference ship. In this case, for example, the reference ship, whichever it is, has a speed of 2. My U-boat has a speed of 1, so it will move 1 space in that direction. And this is a very cool and elegant way to take into account the fact that the convoy is constantly moving in this direction. And later in the battle, the enemy ships may get damaged, they may receive light damage or heavy damage that will reduce their speed, and that means that during the lag movement phase they may be affected and they will start moving that direction, so it may be nice at that point for you to move towards them and finish them off. Then the enemy escorts will try to detect you, they may or may not be able to, they have to roll on a table, but also they have to be at a specific range from you, and the range changes depending on whether you are submerged or surfaced, of course if you're underwater it's much easier for you to go undetected. If they don't detect you, they will move randomly or they may just stay where they are, but you have to roll a die to determine that if they detect you, that is bad because then they start moving uh, towards you, trying to get you, of course. And then you have combat, during which first the aggressive U-boats attack, then the enemy escorts, and then the cautious U-boats. When you attack, you select the number of ready torpedoes that you want to fire at each target. If you're surfaced, you can also use guns. Then you will roll 1d10, you will add modifiers such as your modifier in the weapon that you are using. The number of torpedoes that you're firing against a single target will help you. On the other hand, the distance will be a problem, will give you a penalty. And then you compare the modified roll with the defense value of the uh, target. I'm firing at that ship. Then if I roll on my torpedo attack less than the first number in the defense line, then nothing happens. If I roll the first number but less than the second one, then it is light damage. If I roll the second one but less than the third one, then it is heavy damage. And if I roll the third one or more, then I destroy the enemy ship. Two light damages equal one heavy damage, two heavy damages equal one sink result. 
but then the enemies attack you if you're surfaced and close to the merchant ships even the merchant ships can attack you otherwise usually the escorts will attack you and if they are in the same area as you they are particularly dangerous they have particularly devastating attacks and attacks for them work in the same way you really die you look at their attack values for the type of attack that they're using if they roll the first result uh, then you get one point of stress second result three points of stress third result you sleep with the fish and you continue like this until you destroy all ships in the enemy convoy uh, not very likely to happen too often especially in a case such as this one or you continue until all of your u-boats have been destroyed or simply until you decide to leave the tactical display so in many cases it will be your call you will have to choose when it is the right time to leave the tactical display and when it is the right time to press on and try to destroy enemy ships and then there also are many more things that I do not have the time to cover in this review. You have evasive maneuvers, you have different modifiers and weapons and optional things and situations. This is a game that is very rich. You can add a lot of things, you can customize a lot of things in this game. And yet the core system is very simple, very accessible. Uh, there was a problem in the rules at the beginning, a loophole that made the game too easy, but that has been fixed. You just go on BGG, you will find a thread about rule modifications play according to the new rules and you will see that the game works and it is hard to beat, especially if you're playing the later campaigns like 1942, that's a tough one. Overall, this is a game that is just as fun and addictive as the games in the Air Leader series. At the same time, there are enough differences that you see that this is not just a re-themed version of Hornet Leader. This is really something different. The, the, the differences are considerable. Uh, the theme, the flavor, the pace of the game is completely different. For example, uh, the fact that you do not know how many U-Bots are actually going to show to a battle. This is huge. That adds a lot of uncertainty and will add a lot of exciting moments. But the biggest difference is in the pace of the battles. Hornet Leader is a short, intense, fast and furious confrontation. Get, get in, bomb the target, get out. Here, uh, U-Boat Leader, you have a situation that is about stealth. In fact, in the early phases of the uh, battles, you will be maneuvering around and trying to gain a position. You'll try to sneak past and under the uh, escorts of the opponents. You will study the continuously evolving situation, try to figure out how you can get to a position where you can launch a killer attack before the uh, opponents detect you and after you start attacking of course it is much easier for them to detect you and to start uh, attacking you so the you have this slow paced uh, early phase in the battles and then when you yes launch your attack then it really pays off uh, or you may not be able to do that as you're maneuvering around you do get detected and then you get attacked and from hunter you become the hunted much earlier than you wanted to uh, and then the battles themselves are still full of decisions of tense moments this is really an exciting game uh, even though as i said it has a completely different pace it goes from very slow to very fast but even the slow early parts of the battle still are exciting because it is a slowness that is full of tension there's this build up to the big action that really is exciting I love this game. I really, really enjoyed it a lot. I highly recommend it to anyone who is interested in the theme or simply in solitaire games. Simply put, to me, this is another real winner from DVG.